In May, millions of full-grown salmon school together to begin their great migration, known as the salmon run. When the salmon finally enter the freshwater streams, the streams in which they were born, then one of the great epic struggles of nature begins. For hundreds and even thousands of miles, they battle their way upstream against swift currents. They rest occasionally under a river bank or in some quiet eddy, seeking quiet waters where they may spawn. Next year, their offspring will swim downstream and lose themselves in the ocean. Welcome to Washington State's North Cascades. Throughout these snow-capped mountains, national forests and rolling foothills flow the fish-bearing rivers and tributaries of Chelan County. Several varieties of Pacific salmon journey here every year, arriving via the mighty Columbia. They continue upstream through the Inia and Wenatchee rivers. These watersheds contain hundreds of streams and tributaries, providing thousands of miles of spawning and rearing habitat for Chinook, Coho, Sockeye, and Steelhead. These historical salmon runs represent a unique tradition spanning millions of years, and have long been enjoyed as a dependable food source by man and predators alike. Yet despite the species' resilience, Upper Columbia salmon populations have been plummeting since the 1950s. You know, there used to be thousands and thousands of fish that would come up here, and a couple years, there were a few hundred. After centuries of abundance, a treasured icon of life's determination threatened to disappear. In the late 90s, Congress intervened, listing Upper Columbia Steelhead and Spring Chinook under the Endangered Species Act, providing them the full resource and protection of the United States government. And when the Endangered Species Act comes to town, uh, things change. Faced with unprecedented federal regulation throughout central Washington, three counties, two Indian tribes, and an army of local scientists and citizens joined resources with state and federal agencies in a groundbreaking new partnership. Over the next eight years, they created the Upper Columbia Salmon Recovery Plan and set to work to ensure that central Washington's waterways would welcome home their salmon once again. They started out by going out looking at the watershed and determining what were the factors that were uh, impacting the fish the most. The bedrock of these efforts, watershed planning units, highly localized groups that coordinate frontline analysis and implementation strategies from the bottom up. The one issue that we can control locally is habitat. So we felt that it was our responsibility to take the lead then on habitat restoration, and we're doing it. Roads and railways tend to follow the same valleys and canyons as our rivers and tributaries. These meandering waterways are often cut off and relocated alongside the highway. By bringing back these oxbows, we can bring back the habitat. If you could see an aerial photo of Nason Creek prior to the 50s, the creek provided a lot of off-channel habitat, spawning habitat. Construction cut off the river alongside the highway. Well, by simply uh, going through the highway with uh, two large fish-friendly structures, we provided over 40 acres of, uh, of oxbow habitat. During high flow events on the Wenatchee River, juvenile salmon and steelhead need a place to take refuge from those high flows. These off-channel overflows provide a much needed pit stop, complete with boulder breaks, root wads and log jams for added protection. They'll be able to hide in the rocks and the roots and stay there until the high flow event uh, goes back down and then they can go back out to the main stem Wenatchee. Many important tributaries run through culverts, beneath driveways, and on private property. These can prevent juvenile fish from making it upstream. By taking out 17 barrier culverts, we've restored seven miles of uh, tributary habitat uh, to the fish they didn't have before.
Uh, on our project, 16 of the 17 sites were located on private property, 16 uh, different landowners. And each landowner gave us permission to come in and do this project on their property. But without the permission, we couldn't have done it. We couldn't have done it if even one of those people had opted out. I have to say, all in all, it was not a headache. The project really was pretty painless. I was really impressed with how much people care. They really care about restoring habitat for fish and for making that work in the lives and property values of the homeowners up the creek. But perhaps no single salmon recovery technique is as effective as simply making sure that where our salmon habitat remains untouched, that it stays that way. There are lots of areas in the county and in the region that are high quality habitat. The Chelan Douglas Land Trust has been uh, instrumental in protecting a lot of those properties. One region on which the Land Trust team has focused its efforts is Central Washington's most prized tributary, the White River. The White River is a remarkably pristine watershed that is home to the largest run of sockeye salmon in the entire Columbia Basin. We've been able to work with numerous landowners to protect over 500 acres of critical salmon habitat. Through the Land Trust, landowners can enter into what are called conservation easements, voluntary agreements that protect their natural assets in perpetuity. The landowner could set aside some or all of his or her property for conservation or recreation purposes. If they do so, they can come up with some fairly significant property tax and income tax benefits to them. These salmon recovery projects don't just benefit fish. They also benefit the communities involved. You know, this year alone we've had about $4 million come into our local economy. A lot of the local contractors uh, get work to build fish habitat projects. A lot of the survey companies, consultants. Construction workers, the excavators, trucks, loaders. Beyond providing local jobs, healthy tributaries and fish populations also provide more recreational opportunities. We've just opened a steelhead fishery on the Wenatchee for the first time in about 10 years. Nice fish, eh? We all want to be able to use this resource while at the same time having a healthy salmon run. The way that we're doing salmon recovery is a golden example of how things should be done at the local level. We're probably leading the state in how to work collaboratively. But also Washington State is setting the example for the rest of the Pacific Northwest on how to approach this. The efforts that are underway in the Upper Columbia are an important first step. There's definitely a lot more work that should be done before we considered the, the habitat to be uh, in the shape that it needs to be in. So we have really started to get the message out that don't forget about us because we're still here. It's going to take years for us to do this, so we need the long-term funding commitment to get this done. Salmon recovery is a long-term commitment that brings with it long-term benefits. By banding together, these Upper Columbia communities have transformed an obstacle into an opportunity. By making a better home for salmon, they make a better home for themselves and for generations to come. Fish are migrating from the ocean and are gonna end up in this little creek behind my house. And me getting some debris out of the way, me getting a culvert out of the way is a pretty small contribution really that has a pretty big payoff. Salmon are obviously a very important part of Northwest history and ecology and environment and a part of, of what we as Northwesterners are. The key way to recover salmon is to have an appreciation of all that it stands for. If we have that opportunity to take our children to go observe salmon in their natural habitat, it goes a long ways for our culture of conservation and protection of this important resource.